Sup guys, Juggalo, back again, so welcome guys, thank you for tuning in into my second part. I'm going to try to merge these videos into one big video, so I'm not sure how long it's going to be, just because I have a lot of stuff to try to do and cover. But anyways, we have the file successfully transferred onto the uh, folder, the update folder. Again, I'm going to reiterate. Make sure your USB is in FAT32 format. Create a new folder within the USB and you're going to capitalize PS and then 4. That'll create a new folder for you. From there, go into that folder and create another folder called Update. Again, all these letters have to be capped so we'll read it. Once you have that new folder done, created, again, everything capitalized, then you're going to go transfer that uh, PlayStation file, uh, .pup file that took you five minutes to download from the internet depending on your internet speed and you're going to transfer that file onto your update folder it took about maybe five minutes to do it said 17 minutes originally then it switched out and was a little bit quicker now here comes the moment of truth okay I undid my USB stick that's what that noise for was uh, for but anyways put this somewhere safe you lose this you're kinda of SOL and you gotta do the whole process again. So I'm going to put this over here to the side. Next up, we're going to go ahead and take a play, uh, excuse me, take apart the PlayStation 4 uh, to uh, get into the hard drive section, which is pretty easy. And I might end up being on my knees for this one, unfortunately, or standing up. But there you go. Here's the PlayStation 4. It's pretty simple to do. Unfortunately, the Xbox One will not allow you to upgrade the hard drive. Also, just letting you guys know, the uh, 500 gig hard drive is actually false as far as the amount of uh, storage you can hold on it. What I mean is, the PlayStation 4, uh, I think it's the uh, operating system, is about 100 gigs. So you really have like 4 oh something or 3 something gigs on the hard drive itself after it's said and done once you know everything's installed alright so if you're messing with electronics always remember to remove any metal items that you're doing make sure you ground yourself touch something metal which I already have here see this right there ground yourself and then some people say well you need a mat and whatever well don't really need a mat for me I don't really think it's necessary and here is the tilt, the little shaky that everybody has been pointing out right there. But how you're going to take apart this, and you're going to think, well, there's no, there's no screws here to take it apart. You can't just pull it off. So what you're going to have to do, I did it last night successfully, and I'm hoping I'm able to do that again, is you're going to push down and then pull back on the, um, like that. And you're going to hear a little noise like that it's perfectly normal nothing got damaged or anything like that and then you're gonna go ahead and slide that off so there you go here is the top right here it's completely fine no scratches no dings we're good you're gonna ask well where's the hard drive it and then if you really look there's a square circle, triangle, and an X located. Let me see if I can do this without hurting myself, but there's a screw right. Let me see if I'm there. Nope. Of course, the camera's a little off right here. This is going to be the screw right there. Of course, the light is really bad so I can't see but this is the screw that you have to do it's the only one you have to do okay guys so let me go over here scroll down my camera alright and this is the only screw you have to do do not lose this screw for the love of God <laughs> put this somewhere safe again I'm gonna put this over to the side okay and taking out the hard drive is easy like that this is a HGST hard drive, so I gotta make sure I don't mix up my hard drives because this is the exact same one. 
but you're going to have screws on the sides it look uh, it looks like and make sure that you insert the hard drive the way that you took it out for your new one or you're going to have problems so it's going to be face like this so face down face down we're going to be good okay so now we have these screws that we have to take out right here there's four of them there's one here here and then opposite side so I'm going to push this to the side and then I'm going to do this real quick hopefully it doesn't take too long to do okay there's one screw and then people are going to say well you could fast forward it and I'm like well I could but I rather people see what I'm doing throughout the video so they can follow the same steps as I did as I took okay um, also there is a height restriction I read it was supposed to be nine point um, five millimeters high but it looks like it could be a little higher if you look right here it looks like you could put a bigger hard drive or a taller hard drive um, looking at this metal tab here to the amount of space right here to here so gonna go ahead and take out this hard drive and I'm gonna put it the new hard drive the exact same way I put the uh, how the old one was so this one is still about the same size the holes is, you gotta have to line it up so just give me one second to line this up it's gonna be kind of a pain because getting the first screw in is the uh, fun part once you get the first screw in then all the rest should just fall into place now I like to do a crisscross pattern just so it's a little easier on me because it will basically line itself up so the other two are going to be pretty easy to put in. So I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. And if you hear any noises or whatever it's because I'm doing laundry. I got a fan on my receiver and all that stuff. And hopefully my TV will remain on the whole time because it will shut off after a certain amount of time. So I'm trying to do this fairly quickly. All right. Okay. Almost done, guys. I'm sorry. Okay, then we're going to do the other side. Okay, we're good. Okay, it's nice and tight, snug. We're good to go. So you just put it the exact same way you put it in, like that, and then it should slide into place. Get your, uh, excuse me, your security screw. Go ahead and pop that into place. We're gonna go ahead and tighten that down. Okay, put on the PlayStation 4 cover can be kind of tricky. Uh, what I learned is you do it roughly you try to do it like halfway and then you just slide it on like that good as new okay now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your PlayStation 4 hook it up to the power and everything so I don't think you want to uh, see me do that so you get to look at this lovely uh, blank screen right here right now okay so just give me one minute to do this Hopefully it won't take too long to do. I have to connect the USB. And then I have to connect the power. Which is at the bottom. Okay. Now you're going to take your USB stick. <clears throat> your USB stick. And you're going to insert it into the... Uh, where you guys at? There you go. You're going to insert it in there. And then once you do that, you have that done. Take this, insert it into your PlayStation 4. Then you're going to hold the power button for about six seconds. And what that's going to do is in initiate the PlayStation 4 to go into safe mode. And then from there, I'll show you the other steps, what you have to do. So let me put this USB stick in. Okay, and now I'm going to hold the 
power button for six seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six. And so I'm continually to hold this down just in case. All right. So it looks like I accidentally shut off the PlayStation 4. Go figure, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm going to let go, and we'll see if it goes into the menu screen like I want it to. So there you go. It's in safe mode. That's what we want. You see safe mode, nothing is wrong. Okay? So you're going to hit your PlayStation 4 controller PS button like that. There you go. So we're going to have to hit the... Alright, for some reason it wants me to connect the USB cable then press the power button for some reason. So just give me one second. Oh crap. My bad. Tripped over wires and stuff. Go figure. Alright, so I gotta go over to my PlayStation 4. I have to connect it. And I have to connect the USB cable and then press the power button for some, the my power button, PS button. Okay, so you're going to go, you have restart PS4, change resolution, update, restore, rebuild database, initialize PS PS4. Well, you're going to have to go down here, initialize and reinstall system software. So you're going to select 7. Connect a USB storage device that contains an update file folder reinstallation for version 1.2 or 1.52 or later. Boom. We already did that. Hit OK. So now it's going to read through the uh, PlayStation 4 device that you formatted the FAT32 and all that fun stuff and it should work okay now I don't think you guys want to see the whole process of the please wait so again I might have to do another video and have it that way so you guys can see exactly what it looks like after it's done so again I hope this video helps you out. I'll be back and I'll show you the new uh, hard drive, you know, space that I have allocated now and everything. And oh, of course it does the it gets done. But the next step will be right here. The PS4 will be initialized all users and data will be deleted. Are you sure you want to continue? We're going to have to make sure and select yes enter and then oh initialize the ps4 and all that fun stuff so i might be able to get this done within this little snid bit right here so it's definitely pretty fast and the reason why it turned off is because my receiver likes to go in standby mode if there's not a signal being sent consistently to the receiver for some reason. So that is why it does that. I need to figure out how to turn that off. Because that kind of freaked me out until I realized, oh, it was my PlayStation. Uh, not PlayStation, but my Sony receiver. So it's going to install the software everything like that. I'm not sure how long this is going to be. This is the first time I've, I've done this actually. I still have the PlayStation 3 hard drive and I have never done that uh, with a hard drive upgrade. But this is pretty darn easy I have to say. So 
while this is all updating and everything like that, I'll go ahead and let you guys go because I think you guys, you know, retention span is normally about 10, 10 minutes or so, and it's doing its initializing like software and installing and it'll restart and all that fun stuff. So I'll come back after everything is done and installed. All right, guys, peace out.